Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the first vlog of Darcy and Bailey eventing. How exciting. Um, I'm mainly just going to be using this vlog to be introducing myself, Bailey, our journey together so far. Um, so hopefully it's all good and you like it. Um, I am sat in my car at the minute and I do have like a, a sort of ring light on at the top so that's why it looks a bit funny but I thought I don't want to get out of the cold yet. I'll just film it in here while I'm stood still um, and just talk to you guys for a bit, sort of talk you through how many years now, maybe about five and a half, six years and yeah. Okay so a bit about Bailey. He is a 15-1 um, Cremello, uh, brought over from Ireland where he had hunted most of his life. He is now 20 years old um, and we brought him over from Ireland. Um, well, technically we didn't bring him over. We sort of saw his advert as a dealer, um, was sort of selling him on. Who He'd brought him over for like a week and he was ready to go as he was. Nothing special nothing crazy just just a plain old cob bless him um and so we went to go view him because i really needed just that confidence giver um to help me get out competing and just sort of show me the ropes which uh, he was he, everything they said um on the advert he was which was good um and but he was quite green in the school and his flat work um but that didn't matter he had a very sort of um stable and placid temperament which i just sort of bonded with immediately um so that was the main thing for me which just that was his selling point bless him um and then after that we spent probably two and a half years just training doing a lot of shows um having lessons pretty much every week um and it just sort of all started to come together with us and we were doing really well actually I'd say really improved on his flat work and everything like that he was just a dream to handle and we built this amazing bond up um and like started to slowly become a team because I'd never had a horse like Bailey before he was very independent he's very quick to offense he'll take you into offense whereas I was always the one being pushing the horse to a fence come on like reassuring them whereas Bailey it was like oh like it sort of shook shook me up a bit to start with but once you get used to him he's a lot of fun he's a lot of fun um so yeah two and a half years about about that went by um and unfortunately uh my dad passed away um due to cancer he had only been diagnosed for about a month from sort of being diagnosed to um passing away it was it was a month so it was a short period of time and i was about 15 10 or 16 at the time and i just i just couldn't cope with it i couldn't cope with losing my dad going up to see bailey and riding every day it was just i was exhausted from all the emotions going through my body and having to deal with all that it it was <laughs> I, I, like it was it was horrible it was really hard um but as well not only that it was bailey and sort of horse riding in general was a very sort of uh like a thing that i'd done with m me and dad it was a very like um partnership between us two he would always take me to shows. He would sort of get lessons and and he, he would actually talk to the instructors after and then go home and search it on the laptop. Like, what does this mean and how can I... So, like, he could help me remember it all. He was not a horsey dad at all. He just knew it was, like, a way to sort of, like, for us to speak our own language together sort of thing. Um, and sort of bond as well as Bailey and he really liked Bailey to be fair he he did he did like Bailey <laughs> um but yeah so it also I also struggled like 
I don't know the word, guys, but I really struggled sort of parting between Bailey and Dad. Whenever I went up to Bailey, it would just bring up all the emotions of Dad again and losing Dad. So I sort of started to just not want to go up, not gonna, well, not want to go and see him because I didn't want to put myself through that trauma every day and through their memories every day. And it's not Bailey's fault, and I understand that now, but at the time, when I was like 15, 16, it was, it was a hard time. It wasn't great. Um, and so we ended up selling him to, um, to a man we knew. He's a lovely man, lovely, lovely man. Um, really took care of him. We knew, obviously, he was well looked after. Um, he didn't really do much for the, I think uh, he was there for about three years, maybe two and a half three years as well um didn't really do much just sort of got a bit like lunged and um hacked out a couple of times but nothing to the extent that we were doing before um which was fine I think that probably done Bailey sort of wonders to be fair not as he'd had a quite a hard life hunting and being thrashed around a bit so it probably done him quite like a nice little break um and about near coming up to two years in February, I got a message asking if I would like him back, and I was definitely, definitely down for it. So at this point, I have uh, well, I have I still got the same job. I've got a full time job, um, finished college, finished school, all of that. So I was working, so I could actually afford to then pay for him myself. And I was so over the moon when I tell you I was so over the moon. I was literally in my friend's kitchen crying. They were crying because they knew what it meant to me. It was just one of those sort of pure moments in life where I was like, oh my God, yes. I didn't know how I was going to buy him, where I was going to keep I didn't know anything because I haven't had a horse for so long. Um, and, but I was just like, yep, yeah, that's fine. And then I think it was literally like a week or two weeks later again, I just found somewhere, um, plonked him in there, just sort of got a load of secondhand things or gathered the things that I did have left. Um, luckily, he came with like pretty much most of his um, rugs, saddle, bridle, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it was a mad rush really to get him to get him and get all his things. Um, and that's pretty much where we've ended up here um, in this stable. <laughs> and um, then I've just had him for coming up to two years now in february um and it's been good we done our first event last year um so that was that was that was also a moment where i was crying <laughs> um it just like to get over that last like cross-country fence oh my gosh it's such a adrenaline rush going around um so yeah, we didn't do great. So that's, it's not like we won or anything um, because silly me decided to not put studs in on the dressage and every canter that I asked for, we just slipped into it and slipped out and it was a bit messy. Um, are you gonna come say hi? No. Uh, oh, hi. Yeah, so I mean, you learn, don't you? You learn. Go. It was the first event. I was bound to do something wrong. Um, and so that's why I'm bringing you along this year slash next year. Winter training slash next season. So hopefully we can do a lot more. Um, winter training. There's a lot planned. He's doing a lot at the minute. He goes um, to the treadmill at Moulton pretty much at fort fortnightly. We have, we've have just started um, lessons again um, fortnightly. You just keep coming over here. Um, so hopefully I can bring you along to those. Um, if my mum works out, <laughs> works out how to help me with the camera. Um, and yeah, it's just a bit of progress, just to see. I'm gonna insert a ton of videos at the sort of at the end, just to show you. Obviously him and me together. He's now on the the rosettes. Brilliant. He's in a cheeky mood tonight. So the last couple of weeks, Bailey has had off because um, he started getting a lot of nosebleeds. Um, and I rang, I rang the vets. I think it was about the fourth nosebleed. It was, it was over a period of about four months. 
and I rang the vets and they just said like we'll get him in get him for a scope because it could be something sort of in his lungs in his airways we just need to double check and I was like yeah no that's fine so we got him in we got him for a scope they couldn't see anything serious um they said his airways were like inflamed a little bit inflamed um, but they couldn't see anything serious so they weren't too worried they took some swab and they just said they'd send it off see what comes back for if it's like an infection or whatnot and then um they'll they'll see what to do so the a couple of days later they came back and it um they found out that he has asthma basically or had asthma i don't know really the terminology um and so i went and picked up some steroids he had steroids for two weeks and they said see how he goes then um see if he's getting nosebleeds again or whatnot if he is we'll bring him in do something else try something else if he's not just change his sort of everyday life so he was on straw he's now on like shavings like it's not shavings because i can't afford shavings but i don't know if you can see it's just like um rape rape straw bedding sort of crushed up um i also have to soak um slash steam his hay um so it's just sort of changing him around a bit like that he's out outside more rather than being inside it's just changing him up a bit um so it helps help sort of obviously he's not breathing in a, a ton of dust so hopefully it's been what's it been maybe like a week and a half two weeks <laughs> off of the steroids and he hasn't had a nosebleed yet um so hopefully it's done the done the trick um but that's so that's something i've always got to keep in mind yeah that's me and bailey at the minute um keep an eye out for um our channel subscribe like the video if you do like it leave any suggestions any criticism anything that would help me obviously this is all new to me um i'll link obviously our instagram if you would like um and tiktok if you would like to see more i post quite a bit on there sort of every day what he's doing little stories reels whatnot but yeah thank you guys um don't go out the stable door let's not do that bailey let's not do that shut this door he likes to escape a lot i tell you for his age he likes to run off no oh bailey this pony 20 don't bite my hair